What's up, nerds? Today, I'm gonna show you how to fake depth of field inside of Lightroom. All right, before we get started today, I wanna try something new, just something a little fun and different. And it's just a way for you to get to know me, for me to get to know you. And uh, what I wanna do is actually start creating a poll in front of each video. Um, the link or the poll link is just up in here. It's just something fun to do. And today's poll is, I want to know whether you are into French toast, pancakes, or waffles. Go ahead and leave your comment up here. If you're wondering about me, I am a French toast guy, but if you make a really good Belgian waffle, I might be there. Pancakes are probably at the bottom of the list. Anyways. All right, if you've got suggestions for a good poll too, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear some of the things that you guys might be interested in. All right, so creating depth of field inside of a photograph. As you already know, using depth of field in your settings in the camera can be a really fun, creative way to get these different effects in your photographs but sometimes you don't always get the depth of field that you want to, or sometimes you just plain old forget to make the changes to the aperture to get the depth of field that you're looking for. Luckily for you, we know that we can create a fake looking aperture inside of Lightroom with just a few simple tips. So I wanna show you how to do that today. I've got an example of an image up here just to kind of show you. In this particular example, I was using an aperture of f4, really, really shallow and getting close to my subject. I actually get a soft blur in front of the subject and in the back of the subject, which narrows the plane of focus to a particular point. And that was exactly what I was going for. I was trying to draw your eye to a particular point. This texture was really cool and I was wanting to highlight that by using a low f-stop. But the point here is that you notice that there's shallow in the front and in the back. Now, it doesn't always have to be that way. It just depends on what it is that you're, you're trying to achieve. But in today's example, I'm really just going to emphasize a shallow depth of field in the foreground because I actually like what's going on in the distance. So hopefully um, we can achieve the look and feel that we're going for. So let's jump into Lightroom and show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. So here we are inside of Lightroom and one of the things about this image that I love is actually all the gravel in the foreground. But more importantly, I love what's going on in the distance. You've got this really fast uh, speedboat going down uh, this shallow river here and you've got the beautiful New Zealand mountains off in the background. But what I want is to draw my attention or my viewer's attention to the boat uh, that's off in the distance here. And one way to do that is to add a shallow depth of field in the foreground. What makes this easy in this particular photograph is that everything is really uh, vertical in this image or horizontal rather. Everything is nice and level going across. So for this particular image, it's gonna be really easy to achieve. All we're gonna do uh, is head up to our graduated filter and we're just going to draw a graduated filter down here at the bottom. And I want this first graduated filter to actually be a little shallow. I want the transition to be shallow. And the reason is because I'm gonna get this pretty close to the waterline, but I want there to be a little bit of gap where there is some things that are gonna be in focus since everything else is gonna get blurred. So I'm gonna just move this back a little bit. And once I have the graduated filter in place, the first graduated filter in place, I'm gonna just go ahead and start to make some changes um, in my settings panel. And really all I need to do for this is maybe bring the sharpness down a little bit. I'm gonna bring the clarity down just a very, very small amount and that should do it. Now the way to achieve this and make it look a little bit more natural is not to try and uh, do it all in one graduated filter. I think if you do that, it's going to look a little muddy and it's not going to really look as real as it as it could. So what I prefer to do instead is actually duplicate the graduated filters several times with the exact same settings. So I'm going to start 
by right clicking on the graduated filter pin and choosing duplicate. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this second pin or this duplicated pin down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna duplicate the pin again. And again, I'm gonna drag this pin back. And depending on your image will really dictate how many times you, you do this effect or this doubling effect. But if I just toggle the before and after on with these three pins, you can see how nice and shallow that foreground is and it takes me back and through to, to this speedboat going across. I just flip the image uh, to give it a little bit of a nicer kind of feel going left to right. But as it relates to these graduated filters, the last thing I'll say is if you need to go back to these pins for any reason, you can always do that. Um, you can go back to any pin, just click on it and move it around if you feel like you need to readjust it. Um, if you wanna add to the effect, you can always go back into the settings and maybe add even a little bit more blur or something to it. Um, again, every image is gonna be different, so your look and feel is gonna be different, so feel free to experiment. But the main trick is duplicating these filters for a nice soft transition. Don't try and tackle this all in one adjustment. So that's it. That's one way that we can add depth of field to our photograph to give a little bit more of a shallow effect and help draw our attention to the main subject. In this case, that boat heading on through. Once you've added the depth of field, go ahead and finish the edit as you normally would, and then you're done. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comments down below, and we will see you in the next episode. My name is Adam. I'm out.